This is Brian Holiday on Not a Journalist with Brian Holiday, and I am talking with this wonderful gentleman, Vincent Stephen <laughs> Ong. It is me. Yeah. What's up, dude? How are you doing, y'all? Uh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing well. Today has been a very, very, very lazy day. Um, but I, I can celebrate a little bit. I, I was just showing you, but I, I got this in the mail today. Uh, so this is a, a, uh, adult collectible, not a toy as written on the top. Adult collectible. I don't, there's gotta be a different word. I know, there's right? That's, be... a, that's what they wrote. <laughs> adult collectible, <laughs> not a toy. Okay. I like that. They wrote not a toy. Uh, it's an adult collectible of Franklin Armstrong. Uh, Armstrong is not technically his official last name, uh, but it is the name that he was given in one of the um, later animated ep uh, a series and not in the original comic strip. And uh, yeah, so he's uh, the inspiration a little bit. The joke was always that um, the Franklin Armstrong Collective was a group of like-minded, open-minded uh, people who like to have conversations with little to no judgment, uh, the, the, to, to have like open conversations about things. And, you know, just the idea that Franklin was the original token. So it was kind of a joke on tokenism. And then that just kind of went off into what it is. <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. It was always fun to reference him. And I was really happy when I, I remember the first person I ever spoke to who figured out who Franklin Armstrong was right off the bat was Similac, DJ Similac. Oh, wow. Yeah. Him and I were talking and I was just like, yeah, it's called the Franklin Armstrong Collective. And he's like, oh. The dude from Charlie Brown. And I was just like, oh, shit, nice. man. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's, and you know how Similac talks, right? So casual and comfortable. He's just yeah. like, he just said it all regular. And I got so excited because no one else had <laughs> ever figured it out. And I was just like, okay, cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, But yeah, man, how are you doing? How is that? How is everything in this w wild world that we live in? Uh, it's, uh... <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm 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 amazed that I still have a shit ton of stuff to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm I'm getting to focus on things that have been on the back burner forever. You know. Yes. Uh, so I'm glad to uh, glad to be doing that. Um, but uh, also, I mean, I guess concerned about my personal future in the sense of what the heck am I going to do as a musician, as a as a performer or whatever. Yeah. Uh, when there are no gigs right now, there's all the bars are closed and all the festivals are canceling and all this kind of thing. Um, but more concerned about uh, just what uh, what the world is going to be like. Yeah. Coming well, out of this, you know, uh, I mean, you were the first person that I ever saw. You posted up an article uh, and you 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 went about it in the most diplomatic way, trying to broach the subject of, uh, you know, I'm not. I, I don't remember exactly how you worded it, and I, I'll try and paraphrase, and please correct me if I get any of it wrong. But you were sure. saying, like, there are some, you know, there are people who are having these conversations, and you're saying, in no which way or form am I saying that I'm okay with, you know, this many people dying. But I think we should right. also address that I'm not okay with the loss of small businesses and, you know, the, how it's going to affect the, the smaller, uh, lower um, income businesses and whatnot. And there should definitely be a balance or some other way for us to approach this because it doesn't make sense. It, it can't be one or the other. And then you had an article right. that linked to the story about how Taiwan was addressing it. And right. I, and yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, there was many reasons why, why I asked that question. One of them was just to kind of uh, miss test people and be like, what did, what are people thinking? Mm. You know, what are people? And also, I, I mean, yes, I'm, we're based here in Montreal and, and all this, but in Canada, in Montreal, uh, very liberally minded people. Mm -hmm. But I also have a lot of uh, people on my Facebook that are based in the States mm -hmm. that are, that are maybe not so liberal, that are more, more of a conservative mindset. And I'm like, well, what, what, what are people feeling and thinking about this? Are people down with this? Are people not down with this? Are they thinking that, Hey, this is not a big deal. Like what's, what is the uh, overall feeling? And also yeah. I definitely don't know everything about this. So let's see what people have to say. You know? Yeah. Um, but um yeah, I just I I I don't believe that we're that in Canada that we're necessarily doing. I'm not. I'm totally self isolating. I'm totally in favor of of going with the 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 recommendations. Oh yes, of course, um, absolutely. Let's be clear about that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You but uh, yeah. but I also well, obviously, it's not a long term plan. Obviously, yeah. you know when we know how long it's going to take for vaccines and all this, and also the if if this efficacy of vaccines. Although we know exactly what we're trying to vaccinate against. Of you course, know, yeah. Different yeah but um but um uh, uh anyway I, I i think that we have to be thinking 
not just i mean we ha we had an immediate reaction that was yes the only and best reaction that we could have at the time yes. using the, the information we had at the time mm -hmm. uh we're a few months in we see how people have reacted to that first recommendation mm -hmm. we see the effects of the disease not just uh on people but like on the on the existing system mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. effects of isolation and the, the policies and all this and is it still you know the the right choice at this point yeah. or should we now be and also one of the questions I was raising in that is just like why are we basing our strategy off of the strategies used in you know these other countries when Taiwan has had six deaths so far mm -hmm. and they're the closest to China for example or or South Korea is another example where they've done a very good job like yeah. why are we not basing it off of those countries that clearly they have some idea yeah, how to deal and, with and, an epidemic you know and I think that was uh, and on, up until that point I had just been blindly and I think one of the 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 main things your message brought up was it's very easy for a lot of people to sit and take the initial information from the government and the people around them and form a, 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 a not a not a mob but a kind of just like a default reaction of acceptance that, you know, because mm -hmm. obviously we, we believe and the, factually, I think it's fair to say that the Canadian government and the Quebec government uh, on a provincial level are doing their best for the people. I don't think uh, I don't. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't I don't think for a second that the uh, you know, that you know, not to throw shade at the states, but when I hear about the federal and the state level in the United States fighting over oh my things. God. That sounds crazy to me. And I'm happy that we live in a place where so far I've, I haven't heard anything like that happening in Canada. And, 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 but that's the other thing we took it for granted very quickly that, okay, this is the information. This is the way we should do it. And, you know, let's just, you know, ride it out with this. But then when you sent that article and I started reading how they were approaching it and I was just like, Oh yeah, this actually makes more sense for everyone to right. wear a mask for everyone to have their temperature checked. Um, you know, yeah. for, for daily, daily, parents daily calling in to the schools and giving the, their teachers or the school an update on the children's temperature and and I, I mean I, and I've said this multiple I made this reference to this multiple times on the show and I hope, hope people don't mind me saying it again but when Jesus and Mero are doing a segment and they're you know they're joking about uh, the segment is about how in Taiwan there's still baseball games and the, the, what they were showing us was a, a bench uh, clearing brawl and I'm thinking to my head, in my head, you you have what, like some 40 baseball players on a field fighting each other in Taiwan because they've been able to manage the spread so well that these people <laughs> aren't even scared to get this close to everybody. And that to me seemed like a very, very important moment because as much as those guys were posting it as a joke, to me, it was not a joke as much as, my God, right. the comfort level to run Absolutely. out into a field, to, to crowd around each other on the field and to be just you know, not really fighting, but kind of just up in each other's yeah, faces. Yeah. That, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it kind of ties into what I was thinking about as you were, as you were saying that, which is like this, you know, why, why did we not take this approach? And often people are saying, well, uh, you know, in, in North America, people would not stand to have their freedoms infringed on to have uh, tracing and da, 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 da. Like is isolation, not having your freedoms yes. like infringed on, like, you know, so it's just a different aspect of it. And I think there's a lot of, you know, vilification, yeah. uh, not that it's uh, unjustified. I definitely, uh, anyway, I I'll just say that not that it's unjustified, mm -hmm. um, in certain cases, but, uh, Hey man, we got a serious situation. This is, this is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, this should be, well, this is an epidemic. Yes. You should have the closest to some form of, not this, I'm not going to advocate for martial law, mm. but this is, we're heading towards that kind of direction in the yeah. sense of like, we got a serious emergency. We got to react to it. Yeah. And so our reaction has been uh, this isolation policy, mm. but maybe now we need to evolve to another policy and maybe other places that took a similarly extreme uh, uh, measure, but a different measure are not wrong. You yeah. Know? Um, anyway, yeah, that that's yeah. It's uh, and I, I'm glad to have informed people of this because also yeah. for me, I think part of it was that I was getting frustrated seeing like do this, do this, do this, and I'm like, why is nobody talking about Taiwan? And then to hear you say, I didn't even know about this. I'm I like, did oh not my God. at all. But that, but but great. That's mm. good that I that I shared it because like yes. I, so you you we're always in our own bubble, right? Mm. So I see certain yeah. things, I get certain information. I think, oh, everybody knows this. Yeah, everybody. And like, why are we? So I'm glad to 
have informed some people. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I really genuinely appreciate it. And I did tell a lot of people when I saw it. I was just like, and I've literally have been quoting it every time I talk to someone about this situation we're in right now. I tell people right. I'm just, and I've, I've like looked up more information about how Taiwan is handling it. And I've been telling people like, guys, I mean, I'm happy that we our reaction. Our immediate reaction was to try and flatten the curve because we had expectations mm -hmm. that could you know, overwhelm our healthcare system. And I'm happy that we were uh, somewhat proactive with that, um, at least in, in Canada and uh, here, mostly we were, we were more proactive. And I, I think it was very important that we went about it that way. But like you said, now that we've gone about that, and the funny part is, it's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? So if we mm -hmm. went if we went the way Taiwan went, where we would have told everyone to wear a mask and you have to call in, and you, like you were saying, the, the the reaction might have been like, well, that's too much. I'm giving too much information. I'm sharing too much. Right. And, right. and then the flip side is we in turn said, okay, well, everyone just self-isolate. We'll try it this way. And now people are still in the streets in some parts of the United States, even here in Canada, in Vancouver, having marches against the, the isolation right. and making wild claims like this is all just a government playing a game and controlling us, which to me sounds like a, the, the fact that, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm, I'm blind and I don't think I blindly follow, but I, I, again, also don't believe the Canadian government would intentionally try and keep us all locked up and watch yeah. the economy start to crumble in a way. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it does not make any. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think, uh, I think, you know, I've it, it, on the, coming back to the subject of like the arts and I, you know, I've, mm, yes. I've always said that like, no matter what, like, yes, we have no gigs right now, but that doesn't mean there won't be any, any, any art. Like people mm. continue to create regardless. Yeah. Uh, I think the same can be applied for conspiracy theorists. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> That bo no that business what. is booming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll find a way. Yeah. They'll find a way. You know. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, but talking about the uh, arts, uh, I mean, as an artist, you know, I I've talked to Akeem uh, Grams, who's a, a comedian. I've talked to Tristan Dalala, who's an actor, uh, and you know, we always talked about how the arts are very important and how it keeps us connected. But one of the things that they've all said is how much they miss being able to participate in their outlet. Um, so, what's it been like for you as a musician, like? I, you know, having to, unfortunately not being able, like Herb Science does a weekly Thursday awesome yeah. fun event and then to unfortunately have to put things on hold. What, what, how are you feeling about all that? Uh, well, I have no problem putting it on hold because mm. at the end of the day, it's such a small thing. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. imagine, imagine it was like an optional, I'll put it this way. Like the first day that we had the, uh, the announcement that Legault was uh, asking people to c c cancel any events with more than 250 people. Yeah. That was a Thursday. So we were literally at Bootlegger uh, at our sound check and we were like, or at there for our sound check. Yeah. And we were discussing like, do we cancel tonight? Like, what do, what do we do? And this was like the first day, right? Nobody yeah. really, really knew. Um, and we discussed quite a bit and so I have calls with different members of urban science and all this kind of thing. And uh, in the end, one of the things that Freddie V told me was, Hey, this is just a bar gig. At the end of the day, mm. this is a bar gig. This isn't Madison Square Garden, or if it was, <laughs> yeah. it'd be an even bigger, bigger issue. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but just, <laughs> but you know, it's let's. And at the time, we're like, maybe if we do this now, we can save the summer. It seems like the summer is fucked. But yeah. you know, it's, I that's, no, that's what it is. But I respect it because there's a lot of people who didn't try and save the summer. There was people who were just like, I'm right. going to try and ride this out as much as possible. Um, right. And I, 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 and this is the part that I feel like you and I can both discuss, but what felt like it may have been a selfish attempt at at you know like solidifying revenue now versus later i also understand why someone might be like i need to make money now though because like we've been Absolutely. saying the the small business situation um uh, and i mean that that feels hard like, you know you have connections in the community what's been the vibe from some of the people for example bootlegger like what, you know have you spoken to the people there what's been the the conversation on their end I think in general, uh, it's not looking good for, for small businesses. And uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think the thing I see the most is the restaurants. I mean, yeah. initially, a yeah. lot of restaurants just closed immediately uh, or pretty close to immediately. Um, now, I think they're they're actually doing the ones that are still open are are like having a hard time keeping up with all the orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people are like, do I wait, you know? Uh, 45 minutes to get into the grocery store, then do my grocery, you know, like it's like, Facts. it becomes like, it becomes like three hours per meal now. So people Good are like, point. I'm just going to, I'm going to pay that Uber Eats fee. And, or I guess now it's like free from Uber. Yeah. 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 You know, but uh, you know, so 
the, the restaurants that are doing delivery are, uh, are getting swamped. Mm. Um, but then those who, I, I haven't spoken to anybody, but I would imagine that those who stopped before all these kind of things came in place mm -hmm. are now like, how do I convince my workers to come back when yeah. they're getting paid 2000 bucks to stay home? Oh, man. Interesting right? point. I didn't even think about that. That's yeah. Like I, why should I go back and risk? <laughs> why? Yeah. Risk being in the public, you know, possibly taking public trans transportation, uh, all yeah. these other things, or I stay home and, and, and also I feel like it's not fair to penalize them if they decide they want to stay home. So that's Absolutely. a really, that's a really good point. I wonder what some people are thinking about that. Uh, and yeah, I yeah. feel like I'm going to start asking other people that. Cause I, 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 go ahead. No, of course. No, you, you, I, you're the guest. I, I talk all <laughs> oh, day. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to say like, I mean the, the 2000, like obviously I, I think that there has to be something like that, but mm. you know, now I, I had this follow-up post on my Facebook just asking like, so all those uh, frontline workers or all those people who could, could work from home, yeah. uh, all those people who could not stay home. Yeah. Are we going to give them three months off and $2,000 each? Hmm. Because they have to work during this time. Yeah. Like, are we going to give that to them like uh, six months from now? No. I, I, What's going to happen? Oh, oh, hey, uh, you know, now we keep don't risking. have such a huge need for you. Yeah. So we're going to have to let some people go. Oh, we're going to have God. some budget cuts because there's no money. All the money has been taken up from paying up, paying people $2,000. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's a fucking shit show. Yeah, 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 anyway. yeah, yeah. No, no, it's fair. It's Ugh. fair. That That is a very, man. Yeah, I, I definitely, you know, the, the, the situation played out in such a weird way that, again, I think there's a lot of decisions being made and hindsight's always twenty twenty. And But I course, agree with you that it is it is rough. I think it is rough because, you know, my partner is a nurse and, and you know, goes in and has been working and has been dealing with the, the, the you know, the stress of just being in a, in a hospital on a mm -hmm. almost daily basis. And having to go out in public and having to, you know, be questioned every time you walk into the building to be like, where's where have you been? Do you have a fever? Do you have this? And and then but and meanwhile, I'm at home playing video games and and getting and getting paid, you know, 500 bucks every two weeks because I got laid off. And I and it's it's, you know, and my mom, who's a nurse, every time my mom calls. And, you know, if my partner's the one making supper that day, my mom gets mad and says, uh, excuse me, Brian's at home not doing anything. Why are you cooking supper? And then it's just this argument of, like, me being like, she wanted to cook. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, yeah, man, I mean, I agree with you. I, I think, if anything, there should definitely be when things start to calm down a bit. Um, and that's the other thing, right? Like, a ho hospitals are just always busy. So, you know, right now we're dealing with, like, a lot with this. But, like, hopefully once this is done, if if there's kind of, like, a lull in the hospital visit, just start to give waves of, like, vacation to, like, these people. <laughs> like, they just need – or, like, as many free massages or spa days <laughs> as we can afford to give them because they uh, they deserve it, man. Like, it really is – you know, like like I said, I I definitely don't deserve a spa day after spending the day on the couch <laughs> building a Lego Batmobile. <laughs> and that's a fair statement. And the, and if you're at home playing video games and this is stressful for you, that's fair. But do you feel like you deserve a spa day over someone who's not able to take the time off and is working their best to try and protect us all? And that to me feels like a fair statement. Yeah, and and that's the thing that I'm worried about that they. It, that it'll go further that i mean first of all that they, of course they won't get the three months off and the two thousand of course not. they're not going to get that no, you know yeah. uh you know so, some people have suggested that hey just give that two thousand dollars to everybody so mm. if you're working you get the two thousand dollars and i'm like hey that's not a bad idea yeah uh, you still get the time off but at least you get that yeah you know? like a nice little um, bonus yeah, but I'm I'm also concerned about the economic fallout oh. of giving people all this money. <laughs> Sir, and then like it's gonna be a mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And yeah. then we're like, oh, where do we cut? Oh, let's cut in healthcare because there's not a pandemic right now, oh, so we don't God. need as many people. Like, you know, it's anyway. true. I'm a li I I agree with you that I'm a little concerned because you know my buddy's an accountant. We had that conversation where he was just like, I mean, I'm happy that they're doing all this stuff, but at the end of the day, where is the money gonna come from? Like. And we hear they're giving 51 million to this and 2000 yeah. per person to that. And, and I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm a little concerned about what this is going to mean. Uh, someone was telling me that they think the GST and stuff are all going to have to go up in the next year, couple of years for taxes. Like, right. They're going to have to, they just won't have a choice because they will have spent so much money during this. Yeah. 
you know yeah. i mean it comes from somewhere yeah so we're not talking about that right now and it's uh anyway yeah i, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> i hate to be like so negative but I'm no like, but that's fine Oof. you're being fair you're having these are some of the things that you've been thinking about what are some of the yeah. other things you've been thinking about because you're bringing up things that i did not think about and i'm happy that you're <laughs> bringing again vincent is bringing light to things that i'm <laughs> i'm not i might just be skipping over and i really appreciate that I, well no problem i mean I, you know i what am i thinking about i don't know i i, I guess you know just uh it, totally unrelated things yeah but uh you know i i think it's just just staying on this for a second i think it's just important to like uh not i mean obviously we got to focus on on the immediate issues that we have you know yeah um but i think we can't just focus so much on that that we forget that there is an impact to everything that we're doing right now yeah. you know uh and also not kind of like switching off when you when you get triggered by certain words and what i mean by that is for example right now we're talking a lot about economy mm -hmm. and a lot of people might be like oh economy like people want to start up you know small businesses like yeah. who cares what matters right now is public health and yes public health matters yes we need to have a good health system yes we need to pay for that health system yeah you know and get past this this year you know yeah so, so like in, in a post that I put up recently, I was saying, like, when I say economy, don't think Donald Trump saying economy. Think Bernie <laughs> Sanders saying economy. Yeah. And when he's talking about the economy, he's talking about the same thing, but in a different interpretation. Yes. You know? Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Anyway. So that, anyway, that's, the, that's all. Very I much a medium is the message type thing. And I, yeah, that's sure. it. Yeah. The person saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> no, man. I mean, it's it's true. Uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, yeah, economy has probably become a trigger word for some people. But it, it, in the sense that we do, do genuinely have to think about that stuff. And you're right. I, I, I've been, you know, thinking very much about the right now. And it's funny because when I talk to this is going to air on Friday for t the, the Tristan interview. So I, I don't want to spoil too much of it. But one of the things that Tristan talked about was, you know, for in the in the purpose of taking care of your personal mental health, you know, it's not a bad thing to think about the now right now what you can handle. But at the same time, I think the balance is you're also giving the other side to that is and it's a good balance. You can think about yourself for the personal health for the now, but also if you want to think about the 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 plan of the the your community the bigger yeah you're allowed to think about your community as well and in that case think about how your mental health needs to be protected but also how you can as much as possible work to help the community at large um mm -hmm. uh and and yeah i think that yeah that's a really important that's man yeah again vince <laughs> I, I definitely <laughs> i definitely enjoy talking with you because there's so many things that Likewise. you're saying that, that i'm just like oh i didn't even think about that um what are some of the things that i mean so but one of my questions and i i felt like we we touched it but didn't get to it exactly you as a musician though your outlet of playing music and i right. i know you're okay with how things are and you were fine with you know postponing but right. how do you how what about your actual want to express like i love to podcast i got laid off right. i started podcasting every day after that day that night i just right. started podcasting because i was just like i need to do something that will make me feel happy and this outlet is fun for me um but for you your gig on thursday was i i believe one of those things um absolutely yeah. yeah uh you know i think there's many reasons why people get into music and definitely having a creative outlet mm. um but also a you know there's what you know there's creativity that's that you can you can have creativity in private uh as well as creativity in public you know mm -hmm. um so i guess i'm i i definitely miss the thursdays and all that but it's yeah. it's not such a huge deal for me, I guess. Like, I, I mean, in, in terms of creativity and music and whatever, like, I've been practicing saxophone more than I've practiced since, like, 10 years ago, kind yeah, of thing. Because yeah. I have time to actually practice. You yeah. know, and I can practice during the day. Not... So when, when I practice in the middle of the night, I, I literally go we have a garage and so the car i go into the car in the garage in the middle of the night <laughs> and practice there so i don't have to do that because i can practice during the day i still have done that a few times but uh, i'm sorry but, uh, i just i love that that's something that you you're like in a car closed yeah, and like it's yeah how do you uh, but <laughs> but it, that's a whole other conversation but dude that's that yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you gotta have a way to play sometimes it's yeah. late and you're like like, I mean, late is for me, I wouldn't practice after like 9 p.m. even. You know, oh, okay. I don't know yeah. What my neighbor, well, because my neighbors, yeah. you know, who knows? I don't want to, I don't want to piss them off, right? That's no, no, that's so, nice. Uh, that's respectful. I, I think that's fair. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, so I've been practicing a ton. I've been going, pulling out old books and whatever that I'm like, oh my god, I haven't done this for. Yeah. I like, actually pulled out some some stuff I did like, uh, yeah, actually literally ten years ago, and I was like, oh my god, I can't play this anymore. Like, yeah. I, I just I don't have it together, you know. Dude, I so I, I miss that. I I, I you I, I think I've had this conversation with you. I used to play the alto sax. And, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. and like the from the from when I played in high school until my dad and my uncle bought me uh, my own sax when I was 21 there. I had all so much sheet music, but I just had not played. And then I started like looking at those pieces. And uh, what was the what was the first one that I played? Oh, the first one I played was like the theme to Star Trek. Nice. And, and I was Old just original series? Original series, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That yes. was so <laughs> nice to play, to like love that song associated right. with my parents because we used to always watch it together and then to be playing it. And my dad bought me the sax and it was just kind of this culmination of like all these different things. And I was like, yeah, this feels amazing. And so then, you used to watch the original series with your parents? Uh, yeah, well, uh, like not live, like, you know, in the evenings after oh, oh, school. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, no. I, I, I black uh, don't crack, but I'm not from the 60s, which would. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so my dad used to talk about it, but we never really watched it. Oh, but cool. recently, because it's on Netflix now, recently, yeah, yeah. I've been watching the original series, which I've never seen before. Oh, really? Um, yeah. The only issue is that on Netflix, it's the re remastered versions. Oh, yeah. So some of the effects are like they look yeah. like PS2 graphics or something. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what yeah. the yeah. like? It's like if you watch an Ed Wood movie, you want to <laughs> see all those crazy old Ed Wood yeah. effects. And instead, you've got some yeah, you know, yeah. CGI cutscene. I'm like, what the hell is, you know, I definitely anyway. know, too, because I've seen some of the like I've seen uh, I've watched some of those and the like right. the way the lasers shoot is right. so like different. Like it's like this right. really crisp blue laser, where it's not like, just a line. Yeah, it was like a really <laughs> ugly blue line back in the day. Yeah, and yeah, man. Yeah. <sighs> so that that's that's a shame, but it's still great to finally see that. Like I've never like I didn't know, dude. Uh, like I just started the second season now, so I didn't yeah. even know that Chekhov wasn't introduced until the second season. Yep. But yeah. But he became such a you know character, and you yeah. know, and also the thing that I love is like compared to to TV shows today where they have like a whole season planned out and there's ongoing story and whatever yeah. it's back in the day where they start one episode and they start writing the next and whatever or maybe a couple at a time whatever yeah but you can see that they're figuring out the show <laughs> yeah. so by like the, yeah. by like the eighth episode things have drastically changed like they they put all the focus on these two characters yeah and it's like oh people like these two characters. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's write so, these two but, more yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> like the whole like spock mccoy thing that wasn't oh there yes the that's fair yeah but then by a few episodes in that's like every episode ends with a joke between the two or it's whatever true. You know? oh man so it's really cool to see that you know it's uh i mean it's also it it does not stand up like it's really like <laughs> really it's really like watching edward kind of thing yeah, I mean, yeah there's a few things in there that are that are cool but um so actually the reason i'll just say this anyway yeah. the reason why i got into this was that i started watching tng again yes i was gonna ask and yeah, and then I was like, "Oh my god!" Like by today's standards, I can't. It, like this is so bad. Like the what? effects and everything, and the acting and whatever. <gasps> Sir, so like if you hurt if me, I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I'm starting on season one. Like season one was. Oh yeah, terrible. yeah, yeah. It's so you know bad. I mean? like, Even Jordy LaForge yeah. is in a red shirt, and you're just like, "Nah, man." <laughs> like the, it's just wrong. When I rewatch the it's, first season, I'm like, "What is happening? Why is he in red?" <laughs> <laughs> it's it's full of but there's still some interesting stuff anyway yeah. so i was seeing that and i was just like oh my god this is horrible but i'm like well if i think this is horrible i can watch the original series and i think i'll be <laughs> fine you know? i like the fact that you're just like well if this is bad and i'm still watching it i could get something worse i could get through it. <laughs> <laughs> well i mean like everything like the, the 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 set of the ship in tng is is great and whatever oh, yeah. but the yeah, minute yeah. they go down to a planet it's oh like, yeah it's oh lazy. my <laughs> yeah. god yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Original series is not is is totally doable. It's doable. It's oh totally my doable. god. So, yeah, man. Uh, did you watch? Did you get to watch the original first episode, the pilot that they ended yes, up? Yes, with yeah, Captain the Pike. Yeah, yeah, the caged. Uh, okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And so I, I saw that, and and then I saw. Uh, I made the way all the way through the first season, so they okay. have that episode where they like bring, bring back, back that yes, premiere. Yes. And I was like, wow, this is like a clip show. But it's really smartly done, and they yeah. kind of like they re-edit the ending to make 
anyway, yeah, spoiler yeah. alert for a yeah. show that's like 50 years old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah, they re-edit the ending in a, in a cool way. I thought I was like, oh, that's really clever. Just using editing to like yeah. tell a different story and whatever. Oh, Anyways. dude, I uh, yeah, I'm definitely a trekker. Um, I, I, I really, yeah, yeah. I grew up watching Star Trek. I've watched all the series. Uh, I've watched the prequel series Enterprise. I'm watching Discovery. I just finished Picard the other day. So it's kind of fun watching. Because that's the thing uh, for Picard. If I was when I was rewatching Picard now, the fact that they keep nodding to stuff in the past, and then watching Discovery because Discovery takes place at the same time as uh, Captain Pike is on the Enterprise, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's like crossover with with the Enterprise and Pike, and I was just like, okay, you kids, you you definitely made this show for like a new generation, but also threw it's in little... so much for the nostalgic kids like myself. Yeah, yeah. What uh, so. You know, I'll. I mean, you've seen all of Picard. You're rewatching it, right? Yeah, I, I just finished Picard. I, I just watched all the way to the end. So, what did you think? Uh, I liked it. I liked what they were doing. I like. They, they're definitely trying. It, uh, the, the, kind of like one of those jokes of. There's a lot of stuttering in your yeah, voice. Yeah, because like, uh, well, because uh, <laughs> the thing is, it, they're definitely trying to say this is not your parents. Picard, oh, right? God, are they ever? Yeah. Yeah, like they're really <laughs> trying to hammer home the idea that Picard is now like a new man and, you know, this is a new Star Trek. There's like swearing, like pe- and I'm like, "Oh my god, what? Like you guys are really throwing in the swears any chance you get." Um and I like and I like kind of the nods, you know, 7 of 9 comes back, which is great. I, I was really happy to see her because I feel like a lot of people didn't respect Voyager when it was on. And especially that actress, Jerry Ryan, I've watched stuff where they she's explained, you know, they, the network brought her in because they wanted that new sexy, like, female character. And when they brought her in, she was kind of like a lot of people on the show, a lot of the cast members were a little uncomfortable with her being there. And she felt it. And it was kind of hard for her to be on the show because some of the diehard fans were just like, oh, they're just throwing in sex appeal. And some of the new fans were just like, oh, well, this character's kind of weird. She's like, it's like another take on Spock. And and you already had mm-hmm. Tuvok on the ship. So so to see her character come back, be hyper emotional, hyper like, you know, she's really going for it. She's completely changed. And it's like, yeah, this is fun. This is who, you know, it's fun to see what she's evolved into. Funny enough, I, I found her to be the most interesting part of the show. Picard was great. Um, you know, seeing him and him coming back was fun because as a geek, you know, you do, I always would love to know what happened to them after. And so you mm-hmm. got to, You got to see that. Um, the ending, unfortunately, uh, one of the things at the ending, <laughs> I'm guessing you're already on the same page. Sorry, um, I'm, I'm supposed to be unemotional and yeah. let you give your opinion before I say <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, yeah, no, but, keep going, keep going. Yeah, the, the, ending. the ending, I had I had some concerns. <laughs> I had some concerns. <laughs> I had some concerns. Very diplomatic. Yeah, Very diplomatic. I uh, I uh, I got some to concerns. that those last two episodes and I was just like, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> like, <what? laughs> Oh, oh, I was boy, like, oh boy. especially like one of the things that really bothered bothered me was um, who the villain turned out to be, because if you watch, <laughs> there was only one thing that bothered you. Okay, that's, okay, that's no, cool. no, that's no. There, there's, there's a few <laughs> things that bothered me, but like the fact that the villain ended up being essentially like you know how Data had his twin brother Locke, I think, and uh, Lore, you mean? Lore, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, which only dawned on me at, recently that like lore and his emotional take was kind of like the the idea of like the lore like a story and data is all facts. Oh, and I yeah, always I wondered. It that way. Sure. Uh, I uh, do. I might be throwing shit in the wind, but I really I watched it and I was just like, and I was thinking, yeah. I was just, I was like, lore is like the lore, like he likes a story and he likes to be the flamboyant right. one and. And then to and I, it's funny because I thought of that before I watched Picard's finale, and then Picard's mm-hmm. finale ended up being essentially Lore's daughter or Lore's grandkid. Sure. That's what it felt like. And then you know, versus like Data's like mentality, and I was just like, oh, this was a little, this is a little too on the nose as a throwback. That was one of the yeah. That was one of the things that bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say. I like, I like. If there's anybody out there, uh, you know, watching this right now, and you're thinking about watching Picard and you like TNG, oh, just 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 don't watch it. Oh no, just don't. I wouldn't no. say that. Just, I, 
I'm I am so not down with it. Oh, I tell man. you, so I I was a TNG guy. Yeah, uh, I watched Deep Space Nine, but not all the way through. I think that was right when I started to get out of it. Yeah, uh, Voyager. I, love Deep Space I also Nine. didn't watch all the way through. Okay, uh, although I did see the the finale, the, the, the final episode yeah. for sure. Yeah, which was really um, good. Enterprise. I watched. I think it's like two episodes or something because I remember specifically they had the sexy Vulcan. Yes, to Paul and. Yes, and the archer was the pilot yes, or something. Yes, the captain. Yes. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. So the the pilot, the young. Yes, the one she's like hooking you know, up with. The well, that's it. So yeah. there's the episode where they, you know, they beam down to the planet or whatever. They go down the planet, and on their way back, they're like, "Oh, there's some kind of toxin in the atmosphere, yeah, yeah. so we have to get it yeah. off of us." And there's a shower scene <laughs> where they're both naked and scrubbing each other down. And I'm like, "Okay, I'm done." <laughs> I'm done. And it's like the second episode or something. I'm like, this is the stupidest. Why am I spending any? Yeah. So that I gave up on that. I didn't watch I Discovery it. at all. Uh, oh no. I, I, no. I and I was like, I I watched Picard, and then I was like, oh yeah. maybe. I, at the beginning, I was like kind of down with it, and then as things went on, I'm like, I am definitely not watching Discovery. There oh, is no, no fucking way. I, I'm sorry. I've uh, I, I would say you know back in the, when I grew up, there was like the Trekker versus Trekkie thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I feel like there's trekker trekkie and there's this bro trek <laughs> which is this new era of star trek bro trek I'm, totally, I'm not down with i mean if you're down with it, that's cool you no know, no it's... i know you're like there's some things i like some things that you know oh dude but i uh, trust me you know... i i consume content in uh i you, I watch tv mo not necessarily because i like a show but just because i i want to discuss it later that's of to course, be honest. Sure, yeah, sure. That's, there's a lot of that's yeah, a valid thing. Yeah, because I do like I you know I watch the and but that's that's also the reason that like when I explain to people I watch TV at 1.5 speed and they're just like what and I'm just oh, like yeah because right. guys I'm not necessarily watching because I love this episode of this show sometimes mm -hmm. I'm watching it literally just to be able to say okay this is what happened this is the conversation these are the subjects that they're trying to broach and let's discuss this because I like discussing television. So yeah, well yeah, mean, bro trek. Interesting. Think of yourself as a as a, a media guy who covers stuff. Yeah. You, how the heck are you gonna get through all this stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. So I really, it really, yeah. That's why it's funny whenever yeah. people get freaked out that I watch stuff at one point five. I'm just like, right. guys, I, I literally could not watch everything in one day if I if I don't. And that's you know like G Gangs of London, that new show on Sky that I'm going to be talking about on the podcast tomorrow, Geek Tastic Cipher. I watched the entire run in one day because I watched all of it at one point five. But it, otherwise. Mm -hmm. It's it's the first episode was 90 minutes and then every episode after that's an hour and there's like nine or 10 episodes. I'm not yeah. going to spend tw 11 hours watching TV in one day. So I split yeah. it up and yeah. I watch it in like seven or eight, you know, so. And Actually, so this kind of ties back into the, the other thing is rewatching the original Star Trek. Right? Yeah, yeah. 30, three zero episodes per season. Yeah. All an hour long. Yeah. Like how like <laughs> there's no show today that's or is no. there i don't i don't know like i mean that's insane yeah tell back in the day yeah 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 and and that was normal right because television that, yeah yeah television in the states has always been about selling advertising that was what it mm -hmm. was it wasn't it had nothing to do you know it, it, it's funny that it evolved into what it is now where you want to actually you wanted to make a show good enough that people would watch it and watch the commercials and stick around to make sure they didn't miss the next part but mm -hmm. they never made it good enough that people would like only want to watch that. And now they've started making shows that like some people are like, if I've never watched anything else in my life, at least I watched that. And that's to mm -hmm. me is yeah. like, that's a cool thing to have. I mean, not that they should feel like it's the only thing ever worth experiencing in their life, but just that moment of like, this is fabulous, you know, like, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I don't have any problem with a 10 hour movie, which is what, yeah. you know, some of these, these modern yeah. Yeah, shows yeah, yeah. are. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that can be great. Like, The Wire is one of my, fa I'm going to be that guy for two seconds. We're going on about The Wire. Oh, but, man, man, you nope. know, it's one of my favorite all time things. And clearly, that's like a long form, yes. carefully planned, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, but I also kind of wish that there were these just like fly by the seat of your pants, writing it week to week. Yeah, you know, kind of things. Cause Involve the characters as you not? go. You know, uh, there is one show that did that, but did it so poorly that it just alienated the okay. fans, uh, and that was Gotham. Um, Gotham, oh, okay. yeah, Gotham okay. on Fox. The the initial plan was to do essentially a Law and Order series set in Gotham. Okay. But in the first few episodes in the first season, people saw the Penguin and the Riddler and like other characters 
by their original names, like Cobblepot right, right, right. and Edward yeah. Ingenua. And the fans got so obsessed with like, well, when are they going to do the thing? And when are they going to change? And that the show right. just all of a sudden started switching and changed over to this whole different thing. And I really think it sucks that they did it that way. Cause I think right. had they stuck to the original plan, it could have been really interesting. And instead we got this really like fan driven yeah. version of what the show could have been. But... You know, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's damned if you do damned if you don't, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, we've always heard of whether it's, uh, you know, you're talking about video games and TV shows and whatever, like you've always heard of this thing where the fans are crying for this, that, and like, yeah. well, they didn't listen to us. And so we didn't blah, blah, blah. And that definitely happens where they just mm. are not paying attention. And there's like critical things that are, that are lacking or, or features in the case of a game or whatever. Yeah. Um, but then there's going too far and just being like, Oh, they want this. Okay. Let's put this in. Yeah. Oh, they want this. Okay. Let's put this in. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. work that way. Yeah. I mean, like we've been saying, uh, you know, sometimes w when it comes to art and people expressing themselves, I think it's it, it's nice to appreciate the comments that people give you. But if you have an idea for your art, uh, you know, like you said, and like Tristan said, you know, a lot of that inner stuff, like you're trying to get what you want to say out and uh, Absolutely. Uh, and, and not necessarily only be affected by the outer message from people. Um, and I think, you know, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Um, right. What else have you been watching real quick? Because you brought up The Wire and I, 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 I almost uh, I've watched it, loved it. You know, it's uh, The Wire is actually one of the reasons I watch everything now. Because, Interesting. Yeah, because I, I why, why is that? I had uh, and I've told this story before, so hopefully I'll, I'll make it quick. Okay, but sure. Um, someone said to me once, like, oh, you should watch The Wire. It's a great show. And all I'd ever seen of The Wire were the commercials. And I said at the time, I don't really want to watch another show that just depicts black people as drug dealers and, and gangbangers. And the person just said, no, there's a lot more to it. And then uh, after, like, uh, two years of st standing on that ledge and being like this holier-than-thou, you know, uh, black people are more than drug dealers in the world. Um, <laughs> you know, I stupidly kept yelling that, not actually having ever watched a show and only to watch it right. and realize there's, there's so much more to the show there was and oh yeah no, and, yeah and after that i said i'm never going to talk about a show unless i've watched it because i realized that that was ignorant of me and and it was it was wholly unfair to for me to stand for two years constantly telling people like another one of those yeah. drug dealer black shows when there's so such a well-told story so i mean I completely understand what you're, where you're coming from. And yeah. even given other reasons, I would understand why somebody took a long time before seeing it. Because yeah. it is one of those shows that whenever you run into like an evangelist of The Wire, you're like, oh, Jesus, here we go again. <laughs> the guy's going to say, the greatest show ever. And blah, blah. Oh, and David Simon this. And blah, blah. It's like, oh, God. You know? So I do understand yeah. like, that fatigue or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But hey, it's a... It's a phenomenal show. Uh, what else have I been watching? Well, so yeah, I've been rewatching the original series very, very slowly. This actually yeah. started before uh, confinement. So okay. I've been watching it very slowly. Um, I've been watching, actually, tying into The Wire, sort of, in the sense of a, po well, The Wire is not a police procedural, but no. it yeah. seems to be at first. Yes, right? yes, yes, uh, yes. But uh, so I've been watching Mindhunter. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. And uh, have you watched it or no? I haven't watched it yet. I would really like to. I just find it sometimes. I find it hard to watch some of those darker shows. Like there was a there was sure. a there was a two year period or three year period where all I watched was like Nickelodeon and Disney kids shows because I was just <laughs> I'd gotten so tired of watching like police procedurals. Like we found another body in the alley. Oh God, yeah, yeah, look yeah. at what they did to her. And then I was just like, and then you watch Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, and you're like, these guys are idiots on a boat. <laughs> 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 yeah, not a good back to back. I don't recommend going. Yeah, on. yeah. Um, but I, what I will say, kind of tying it back to the wire. So I, I'm, I don't know how many episodes into the second season now. Maybe three or four. Let's say five, maybe. Yeah. Um, and so the character of oh my god, I forgot his name. McNulty, McNulty yeah. from the wire, right? Yeah. The, yeah. The, the the protagonist. Yeah. Or protagonist, as some people say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's. I, can we talk about spoilers of the wire given that it's a freaking oh, dude, 15 yeah. year old yeah dude, okay. go right ahead uh, man. Come on. <laughs> you know there's I, I don't like the or well don't like the fifth season of the wire to me is like the weakest season because it has the vault like uh fan service like bringing back characters that really should not be coming back because you know they were in like witness protection and yeah. suddenly they're, they're just they're like whatever anyway <laughs> so uh you know the whole thing with McNulty creating like the fake serial killer in the fifth season and like just going full like McNulty crazy and trying to yeah. do anything to get people to pay to, you know, yeah. I, I didn't buy that. Uh, mm. And I always felt that was a 
like they must have known that was the last season and they <laughs> must have like fast tracked this you know plot line in order to make it happen whereas yeah. the whole thing about the wire is like really taking your time to develop a, a plot line so that it makes perfect sense when it finally hits in it's like yeah crazy awesome payoff, payoff right yeah um so one of the things that i'm liking in the second season of mindhunter is the protagonist uh it seems like he's um going through a similar thing where like you know he's he's been doing things in a very uh uh, uh instinctive way and like I'm right and I'm just going to do it and whatever. And yeah. that stuff seems to be catching up to him. And the way that the other characters are reacting and the way the other characters are getting sick and tired of him always going and doing his thing, it's like more carefully developed. And I'm liking that there's a, there, there's a character because develop- otherwise like that protagonist is kind of like this uh, super genius yeah. at talking to, to uh, murderers and he can get all this information from them. But now you're finding that, Oh, maybe he made a mistake there. Maybe he made a mistake, you know, oh, so it's, or maybe he's interesting. effing over some other people because of this thing that he did. And, yeah. and so I like that they're showing that, uh, a little bit more realistically and building it a little bit more realistically. Yeah, because a lot of procedurals so. have the perfect, like, Sherlock-esque characters who mm-hmm. walk in and, like, you know, when I, I think Law and Order Criminal Intent with uh, where he would just, like, walk in and tilt his head and people would be like, I killed them! And just spill everything. <laughs> You're like, what the hell? <laughs> Why are you admitting to anything? He just yeah. tilted his head for two seconds. Yeah, so I definitely see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. It, dude, this uh, always a great conversation with you every time we've, you've been on the show. It, you know, when it Likewise. used to be Fantastic Side for the Hip Hop Show or the early days of Geektastic or even now. But uh, I, I can imagine, you know, uh, with everything that you like you said, you're going to be practicing your saxophone and hopefully not too late. <laughs> so you don't have to do it in the garage. But uh, is yeah. there any are there any last things you want to tell people or a- anything that like uh, any final tidbits that you've like you've like i've said you've been throwing stuff out at me that I, I really has me thinking and, and looking forward to discussing further with other people uh is there anything else that you're that you'd want to tell people to just be mindful of or be aware of or even just to make them happy <laughs> i mean i think it's uh, the the thing i would request is the most impossible thing which is the, the thing of trying to put yourself in other people's shoes you know that's oh, really yeah. I think the source of so many problems, you know, just in the world in general and why we shut down when we hear an opposing point of view uh, and whatever. But, uh, you know, that that's pretty much all I can say. Uh, I think everyone is trying to um, find way in terms of artists. They're trying to find ways to to either find a source of revenue mm. or just remaining creative during this time. Like with urban science, we have this thing called pass the beat. Basically, mm. we have people like recording like a drum beat and then somebody else records like a key part over it. We're cool. doing like an offline jam session oh, that's session, awesome thank you um what, what, and, you know everybody's trying different ways but it's uh another thing is bringing in money right now but yeah. you know that's uh that's uh, at least people are staying creative staying connected in some way yeah i'm hoping that the the, the community aspect of like because i i've had a whole bunch of people reach out to me and be like hey do you mind subscribing to my youtube page because i'm hoping to monetize and oh, i have god. to get to a certain number and at first i was just like oh god but now i'm just like you know what sure do you mind throwing a like to my facebook page or to my you know right. our podcast and they're just like yeah man no problem so i, I kind of like that that like we're all trying to because i know i i know someone funny enough who uh, started approaching this this quarantine creativity, as I call it, um, as like I need to be the best, and I don't want anyone else to do better than me. And I, I and I like saw them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude. It was re- it was really weird. I started seeing them like posting stuff, and they weren't saying it outright, but there was like a lot of like I know other people who've reached out to them and asked them to like oh, hey, would you mind, like, you know, jumping on this? And they're just like, no, nah, man, I'm busy. I got my own thing. And it's just like, oh, okay. But then they'll turn around and be, like, reaching out to other people to help them with stuff. And it's like, mm, okay. Yeah, it's, yes. a, it's a two-way street. If you're, if you're, yeah. yeah. Especially in this yeah. situation. It's a, it's a, it's all about working together, man. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that said, you know, I, I did a, a, a live stream workshop recently about promotion. And, mm. like, I, I mean, I understand people trying to monetize their channel and whatever. Yeah. But, like, you know, trying to have a profitable YouTube channel is not something that can be accomplished in, in like a couple of months time. You know uh, what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it, it real. I think, I mean, I think, I don't know anything you about YouTube. Really... So, so yeah, I mean, I, I think there's, you know, there's a people like, well, it takes a thousand subscribers before I can, you know, do this or that. Oh, so I'm okay. going to try to get that. And it's like, well, you also have to have content with like millions of views and, like, <laughs> or, or how about just content? Let's just start with yeah, content because yeah. right now I take a YouTube and there's nothing there, you know? Yeah. So 
I don't know. It, it to, to me, it, it just it smacks me so much of like you know when you get a friend request from somebody you don't know and you're like, okay, well maybe they listen to the show, so I'll accept it. And then the first thing you get is a you know a request to like their page. You're like, yeah. I don't know who this <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. That's not how you do pro- you know. That's yeah. Not how you do promotion. You got to have a solid product. Like yeah. you're putting out a product every day or every like very frequently. I I it's podcast. Here. I podcast this show, Not a Journalist, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and I do Geek Tastic Cypher every Wednesday. So I am right. five day, five evenings a week doing something. Yeah, right. And I'm so already... you got a product. You know, you got Thanks, stuff yeah. coming out. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, trying. so you, there's somebody who should be working on the on the promotion side, yeah. but somebody who's got a YouTube channel with nothing on it, and they're like, <laughs> oh, I want to get a thousand. Like, come on. Yeah, like, yeah, work, yeah. Get put something up there. Like, do. I'm, you know. Ho- you know, I'm hoping that once I, you know, I, I made the joke when I, I interviewed someone last week, Friday, about how, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, if I, if I do this enough, maybe some advertisers might come my way. And I said that jokingly, but I am kind of hoping that, like, if, you know, if the product is good enough and people s- start to see that I am connecting with a lot of people and they like the content, that they'll be interested in in reaching out and um and maybe put it throwing, you know, uh, ad revenue or even even if it's not ad, if it's cross promo, I'm down too. you know, like that right. to me seems just as fun. Like I wouldn't mind, Absolutely. My, you know, someone being like, give a shout out to this and blah, blah, blah in return. So, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. mean, obviously, we're, we're not turning down. Any no, opportunities of like course that. not. Yeah. But but I just I'm, I'm just responding to the, the fact that, you know, people yes, definitely like, yeah. like, subscribe to my thing. It's like, mm-hmm. man, I, you know, how many YouTube channels have I watched like? tens or twenties videos of that I have not even liked and subscribed to. So you want me to like and subscribe to your channel that has nothing that I've never it's seen facts. anything from. It's facts. Like, so true. On. Like so yeah, true. You know. <laughs> anyway. Well, and, and it's also I think it's kind of like the the for me with you know musicians putting on shows and everything, they're yeah. like, come to Space Show, come to see the it's like, man, like get past the point of like inviting focusing on inviting your friends to shows. Like yeah. have something that people who are not your friends want to go see. It, yeah. You know, and like that's a much greater like yeah. don't focus on like and especially not all your friends are into the music you're doing or not all your friends are into in this case the podcast or oh whatever. yeah yeah so reach I, that bigger audience i know, you know? for a fact anyway. dude my partner doesn't watch this podcast <laughs> there you go yeah bless good. her <laughs> uh, but i mean you know i know that this she might not necessarily find everything that i discuss on this one interesting so and that's okay like you know everyone has the right to their their own interests and whatnot Absolutely. dude thank you so Absolutely. much Vincent. thank you honestly this is generally a great conversation i really enjoyed talking with you uh you know likewise yeah man i really appreciate it. and also the fact that we got to geek out about star trek was fucking awesome man really like that was great i'm really excited uh i i still think you should give discovery a chance it just in the sense of like being a fan um and you know what i almost kind of want to have a conversation with you and jonathan emil because he, he he's also a pretty big trekker we like we really? had, I yes, know yes, that. yes 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 okay and his misses even more so like that really that, yeah we were hanging out one time at uh his stu- when he was doing a studio session and i got invited um okay and when his wife came, we just started talking about Star Trek, and I was just like, "Oh, she knows what's up!" Like it was, it was okay. fun, yeah. So yeah, I think we might, maybe we'll do this again with you the, and just do I'm, a Star Trek one because it'd be fun. I'm super down. I haven't seen Jonathan in a long, 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 long time. Okay, yeah. I don't know how many years it's been now, but uh, I would be super down for that. Dope. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll yeah. hit him up and ask him. Okay, man, thank you so much. This has been great. Oh, hold, I re- on, hold on, hold on, hold oh. on. There's not sign off yet. No, hold on. Okay. Whoa. Whoops. Hold on a second. Wait, Am we I had still there? Shoot. Okay, here we go. Uh, I wanted to. Okay, yeah. Just. <gasps> oh my god! Is that an original match? Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, wait, hold oh. on. Let me find. Um... Those were so beautiful. Oh! Oh shit! I uh, broken, but. Oh, oh my God! Shockwave! Shockwave! Shockwave. Yeah, um, hold on a second, guys. Oh, this fuck. at this Wait, point, oh, here he is. this is for uh, okay. this is very much for me and Proto Man. And, oh yes, is that original? This is beyond original. This is a Japanese version before he was a Transformer. Oh he yes, came. He came with a little doll of a human that rode right inside hot that i've since damn. probably lost i think but yeah hot. <laughs> okay folks if you're watching Hold this out for you and you're seeing my eyes like popping out of my head right now 
Because if you guys <laughs> haven't uh, noticed, to all of you guys who are watching this behind me, like what he just the right first action right figure he just showed you, I have a Metroplex. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna dare tilt the camera. Let's see if they can see it. <laughs> That's why I pulled up Metroplex first. Yeah, I, I saw that guy. Yeah, so I have a Metroplex, and I have like, oh, dude, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. So Thank the thing you. that's killing me is I pulled out all these boxes, yeah, and there's one that I couldn't find, but I I'm pretty sure that it that he's at my mom's place. Okay. I, I hope, which is I have Fortress Maximus. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. So you were Fortress a full Maximus. on like I know we've discussed this, and you said. <laughs> You were into Transformers, but you were legit into Transformers. Like, you had them. Like, yeah. We're not even joking. Yeah. No, not at all. God not damn, all dude. Joking. That Serious was, business. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, I, 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 Thank you so much, my friend. I, I don't even know what to say to that. I, I Actually, I know what I want to say to it. Uh, I want to play the theme song to Transformers Ooh. as our, as our sign-off. Sure. Because I feel like that. Cause my God, or what about that rock anthem from the movie? Uh, what is it again? You got the touch. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, you oh, know? that one would get flagged, sadly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I feel for like sure. well, probably the theme song. I don't know. I hope like the I hope the theme song doesn't get flagged. It's always so sad when they flag it too, because it's like I'm not trying to be a like a, a, a misappropriating the song or anything. Like mm -hmm. I get the rules, but still, let me play the Transformers theme. You sick bastards. Hold on. <laughs> What is this? This isn't it. Why does it say Transformers theme? Oh, yeah, it is. My bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is... This is the like movie? the movie one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Guys, this has been one of my faves. Uh, I was already having so much fun because we geeked out about Star Trek, and then you just threw in Transformers, <laughs> and you just really, you just nailed the ha head on the hand. Like, dude, that was awesome. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, Vincent, Stephen, Ong. Dude, what's uh, what are all the tags, uh, the social media where people can follow you and whatnot? Oh, uh, I mean, Urban Science is best, the best way. I mean, Vincent, Stephen, Ong, I'm not really much of a personality these days. Cool. But uh, the band is Urban Science. we got Urban Science La Cypher every Thursday, hopefully restarting at some point. Yeah. And the Urban Science Brass Band. Dope. Okay, I'm gonna put like I always do, guys. Put all the, all, all, all that the... stuff on the and and belows and whatnots and and yeah, <laughs> dude. Thank you so much. This was great. It was a pleasure. It was fun. All of it. And make sure you like and subscribe. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, man. All right, take care, homie. Have a great one. Have a good one. Oh my god, guys, so much fun. Uh, that's pretty much. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off real quick. Guys, make sure to check out everything. Make sure you go over to um, brianholiday.com, B-R-I-A-N-H-O-L-I-D-A-E.com. Uh, that's my new website. All this stuff is going to be linked there. I'm slowly building up the YouTube channel to have all the past interviews that I've done. So this one and the previous ones are going to be up there sometime soon. And uh, once again, make sure to follow all things Urban Science. I'm going to put the tags below. Uh, and yeah, I for almost forgot. You guys can still vote. It's uh, You can still vote for Best of Montreal. Uh, so make sure to vote Urban Science. There's a whole bunch of categories that they're uh, eligible for. And make sure to vote Geektastic Cypher for Best Podcast Category 24. Guys, that's it. I'm out.